welcome. I'm Ijoma Honyaso tonight. National Emergency Management Agency allays fears of a predicted flooding in parts of the country, assures action is being taken to avert major disaster. Minister of Budget and National Planning defends 2016 budget approved by President Buhari, notes that final document is an improved version of the one earlier passed by the National Assembly. Police undercover cache of ammunition buried underground in a community in Anambra State, Nigeria's southeast region. And leaders of Russia and Turkey pledged to restore economic relations after a row over shooting down of a Russian bomber by Turkey. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria directs all commercial banks to write off bad loans for this year. And in sports news, Nigeria Football Federation appoints German coach Gernot Rohr as Super Eagles technical advisor on a two-year deal. I'm Gloria Umezuki. I'm from Abuja. NNPC Group Managing Director dismisses speculation of field price increase amidst complaints by major marketers over forex challenges. We begin tonight in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, where the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, Sani Sidi, says federal and state governments are prepared to avert a humanitarian crisis following the warning of impending floods across the country. He was speaking at an emergency humanitarian coordination forum where different agencies of government and some international agencies met to discuss contingency plans to respond to the flood alert. Our correspondent Larry Lassisi reports. Some of the devastation left behind by the flood disaster of the year 2012. In a bid to avert this, representatives of different government and international agencies are here to work on an action plan in response to recent flood alerts. The Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency says the meeting is necessary to ensure the coming flood does not lead to a humanitarian crisis. We all need to activate our mechanism, tools, and instruments to prepare for, prevent, against, reduce the risks, and respond to and to recover from any flood disaster we may be facing this year. Early warning should be matched with early action. And what we are doing today is to really match this early warning to early action. The Director General of the Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency speaks on the figures his agency has now in relation to the flood of 2012. I think that watching the first station to end in June. Uh, the level there is higher than what obtained in 2012 at the same time. And also at Lokoja, the, 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 the level there has also increased beyond what obtained in 2012. Similarly for Wuru um, Boki, um, you know, Entrance from the A presentation was made on the flawed alert, the contingency plan that has been put in place, and the role of the different agencies involved. Mr. Sidi says a lot of work is being done with state governments. Was, was unique because in 2012, that was the biggest natural disaster that we have experienced in terms of flood in the history of Nigeria. So it came, uh, it was new to us. A few things that have been made clear at this meeting is that time is short and local action is very important. And the cleaning of drainages will go a long way to ensure that the coming flood doesn't become a humanitarian crisis. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. Now farmlands and houses in seven local government areas of Kano State, said to be worth over one billion naira, have been destroyed following a recent heavy downpour. This revelation comes barely 24 hours after the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, issued a flood alert in certain parts of the country. According to the Executive Secretary of the Kano State Relief and Rehabilitation Agency, Mr. Ali Obashir, the affected local government areas include 
Bebeji, Bawakinkudu and Bangwai. The agency has confirmed that at least 5,300 houses were destroyed as a result of the flooding. 745 victims were recorded where their houses were destroyed by the flooding. Uh, Chanono, 58 victims. Garimalam, local government, 996 victims were recorded, where their houses were also totally either destroyed or blown up. Uh, at Bebeji, 400, 403 farmlands and some houses were totally either washed uh, washed, washed up and uh, thought, uh, some houses were blown up or destroyed. 403 victims were affected. A startling cache of bullets have been uncovered and are being evacuated in Agulu, Anocha local government area of Anambra State, Nigeria's southeast region. The bullets were discovered while the foundation of a building project by a community member was being dug. The Anambra State Commissioner of Police says several buckets of bullets were unearthed and there are still bullets left which are yet to be brought to the surface. He adds that the investigation has commenced to determine who buried the arms. Disquiet creeps into Agulu after the police descend on the town following the discovery of thousands of bullets while the foundation of a building being constructed by a community member was being dug. While this worker evacuates the bullets, the state commissioner of police says investigation is ongoing to find out the purpose for which the bullets were acquired when the bullets were acquired and who bought and buried the bullets. A full investigation will be carried out and we'll be able to establish the purpose and the reasons why they have been found in this area. Meanwhile, we will have secured the area and experts are doing a lot of work to ensure that there is no problem. Mr. Okaola is appealing for relevant information from the people while also assuring them of the commitment of the police to continue to battle criminality. Yes, I want to appeal to the residents of this village, Agulu, that they should be cautious and they should also be able to pass information to the police whenever they come across this type of situation. I am pleased with those who have done this. They gave us information and we promptly we have, inter uh, we have come to the scene and we have done a lot on, on, on the situation. There is a new sheriff in town and this sheriff does not have patience for crime and criminality. I have come to fight crime and I will fight crime with my teams and the, the officers and men on the ground and that's exactly what we have done. We've hit the ground running and we'll continue to do that. There is peace and tranquility here and um, I can't see myself not keen to that. The governor has done a lot, my predecessor did a lot too. So we have a platform that we're operating and we'll keep it going. Members of the community say they are in the dark as to who purchased and buried the bullets. The police on the other hand say they would place a high-powered surveillance in the area and eventually get to the root of the matter. 24 hours after the termination of the amnesty earlier granted to Mr. Tewase Akwanza by the Benue State Government, the police is asking all Nigerians, including the media, to assist in arresting the suspected gang leader. Benue State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Bashir Makama, says although the suspect evaded arrest, property for criminal activities were destroyed. Members of the Benue State Security Council rising from a closed-door meeting that lasted six hours. At the meeting, they reviewed last Saturday's military action at Bise. A government representative addresses a press conference on the outcome of the meeting, one of which is the termination of the amnesty pardon and the agricultural produce tax collection earlier granted Mr. Tewase Akwaza, also known as Ghana, when he gave up his criminal lifestyle. By these activities, it has become clear that he had renounced the ministry pardon granted him. The council directed that 
the state internal revenue service should terminate Ghana's revenue contract with immediate effect. It noted that the, the schools and the compound of the gang leader were training grounds for criminals and the Indian hemp depot, hence the need to destroy them. On the sidelines of a security meeting, the Director of Personnel Management of Katsina Ala Local Council denies any protest by Bise community against the military. Carry out the operation without any hindrance. I think that even the development of the people of that community will come in because it was a best interest for, the, for so long, particularly at the Aziz of Stodonga and the Bise. There have been crises issues of like, killing and kidnapping. The Commissioner of Police leads other security chiefs out to intensify efforts aimed at returning peace to the area. He tells journalists that Ghana is still at large and property used by the gang leader were destroyed in Bise without civilian casualties. You cannot cede your areas to people that uh, do not want peace. We are asking you to, to volunteer information on how to get in. Because everybody is, because security is a collective responsibility. Having agreed that Stewase Akwaza must be brought to justice, the ball is now in the court of the security agencies to fish out the outlawed former amnesty of the Benue state government. And with the revocation of the Benue State Amnesty deal, the man in the eye of the storm, Mr. Tewase Akwaza, has denied any involvement in the killing of the Benue State Governor's security aide, Mr. Deden Ibana. He says Mr. Ibana's murder, when he visited Governor Samuel Otom at the state government house in Makudi to commiserate with him, only to find out that later he had been declared wanted. Mr. Akwaza, popularly known as Ghana, is a suspect of a manhunt by security forces who raided his village in Katsina Ala local government on Saturday morning. Did you kill Dana Igbana? No, I didn't kill Dana Igbana. When I have heard about the killing of Dana Igbana, I was at my village at Igbisi with a security agent that they are with me as my security, given at state government level. So I went from the, one of my commandant who went and told me that he heard, they call him at Makodi that the, 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 Mr. Dene Igbana was shot at yesterday night around 2 o'clock. Then I say, okay, hence as it is like that, let us go directly to the Excellency so that I will go and greet him and tell him. Then when we went there, I discussed with the Excellency. After we finish, I come back and I tell him that if there is anything concerning me or he needs my assistant, he should call me. He should not even hurt. Then I didn't hear on call the, the come and arrested some 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 civilian joint task force at the Katanala, then go with them and after that the day that they were taking those people to court they took my name there as I uh, was to arrest and I am um, running so that is why they didn't go to me so immediately I hear this announcement on radio I called the excellency that this is what I hear, and then they didn't invite to me anywhere, and they took my name to court. So I was shocked. So he, he told me that he will call the commissioner of police and know they did how the issue went like that. Then after that, the next day, the commissioner of police sent a letter to Gatete's Nigeria Limited Company that they should reach me in the letter that they, they, I should submit, I should report it myself to Commission of, of Police. Our correspondent Charles Eruka speaking there with the man Tewase Agbana before he was declared wanted. And in part two, after the break, Governor Samuel Otom responds to Ghana's claims on the allegation of murder. That's in a moment. Enjoy us again.